What's up, YouTube? Jeff, your style OG. And on today's video, we're gonna talk about how Timberland Boots became so popular. If you're new to the channel, we release a new video every day at 4 p.m. Eastern, discussing various men's lifestyle topics, such as style, grooming, and dating. I invite you to subscribe and tap that notification bell and join us. And to my returning friends, like Kelvin Gillet, salute. Ah, the Timberland boot. Classic, versatile, durable, stylish, and rugged. A style that I've personally been rocking for over 25 years. You know, since I was around three years old. But how did this boot become so popular? Why did guys like myself and many of you out there start rocking it? That's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about the Timberland boot company as a whole, the premium wheat boot that we love, you know, the construct, or as in Philly, we call the butters. Talk about the origins, how they became a part of pop culture, and why we still rock them to this day. So without further ado, let's get into this breakdown on how Timberlands became so famous. Now to get to the roots of this style icon, we have to go back to the 1950s, before the Timberland Company was even called Timberland. Back then, it was called the Abington Shoe Company. It was actually started in Massachusetts, but was brought to New Hampshire in 1965 when it was bought by a gentleman by the name of Nathan Schwartz, who along with his sons introduced an injection molding technique to footwear that allowed for a stitch-free construction of the sole and upper that made the boot almost waterproof. The Schwartz family moved the company to New Hampshire in 1969 and introduced that technique into boots. They officially launched the Timberland boots in 1973 and they had three different models. You had your eight inch with the padded collar, you had your six inch with the padded collar, and you had the varieties without the padded collar. Side note, as you know, I don't own the non-padded collar, and unless you're using it for work, I don't suggest you do either. In Philly, we call them butt naked. I don't want you out there without any clothes on. Now the boot came in a wide variety of colors, including the traditional brown, but it was the wheat colored boot in mini buck that was an instant hit became so popular that Timberland actually trademarked the name Yellow Boot, which is what they are officially referred to by the company. The boot became so popular that they decided to change the name of the company from the Abington Shoe Company to the Timberland Company. Of course, the boot was initially meant for blue collar workers and that's who it hit with first. Now these boots initially became very popular in upstate New York, mainly because of the durability and their waterproof quality. But the popularity wasn't refined to upstate New York. Eventually they came downstate to New York City and became popular throughout the borough. And although Timberland intended these boots to be worn by blue collar workers, they became a part of popular culture in the early 90s. Now what happened, a lot of your D-boys, your hustlers, you know, you guys out there hugging the block all night, started wearing these Timberland boots. They needed something that would keep their feet warm and dry and would be super durable for urban living. And that's how they started becoming part of the rebel culture, the hustler culture. Now, like a lot of style that's been introduced into hip hop, a lot of it was brought from your hustlers, your drug dealers and such, and rappers started incorporating into their style. Tim's are no different. Your early 90s rappers started incorporating style into their style. I'm talking Nas, I'm talking Wu-Tang, talking Biggie, I'm talking about Jay-Z. And a young man you might know as the Style OG started incorporating into his wardrobe as well in the early to mid 90s. Boots became so popular in the 90s, Timberland seen an uptick of over 50% in their sales. This isn't to say that Timberland was happy about the way we appropriated the boots into our style. In fact, they weren't too happy about it at all. In fact, there was a statement from an executive in the company who said, if you wanna buy us and you are not a part of our target customer, we don't have a point of distribution that speaks to your lifestyle. So that urban myth that Timberland wasn't that happy about us rocking the boots? True. They purposely didn't have distribution points in the city, but that didn't stop the fellas that really wanted to rock them from getting them. In fact, a lot of guys would travel up to New England just to cop a pair. During the 90s, not only were the Butters and Constructs very popular, there were a few other models that got a lot of burn as well. But one, we had ones that we refer to as the Mob Deep Tims. These were a combination of a green padded collar with the brown upper. Made initially famous as Havoc rocked them on the backside of their classic album, The Infamous. And another popular boot had to be the 40 Below. This super boot with a much taller construction was made famous by a lot of rappers as well, including one of my personal favorites, Das FX. But it's the six inch premium wheat boot that has stood the taste of time and has really become an icon. Fast forward throughout the 90s, 2000s, and even through the arts, the butters can be seen on a wide range of people. Now we have to give Timberland credit for eventually coming around. 
I guess Commerce Speaks, it seems to have seen the error of the ways and started incorporating collaborations with more urban oriented brands, doing collaborations with different hip hop icons, people such as Pharrell, Big Boy, Supreme, Stussy. I guess they learned where their bread was buttered. And of course now Timberland boots are just a global style icon. Going from a boot that was initially tended for workwear and just like jeans, denim jackets, and Carhartt jackets became incorporated as part of style. Okay, so there you have it. My quick rundown on how Timberlands became famous. Let me know in the comment section how long you've been rocking Tim's and if you want to see more videos in this series on how certain style icons became so. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, hit that like button. It helps the channel to grow. And of course, tap that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos we release every day at 4 p.m. Eastern. And I'll check you out tomorrow.